Hi you guys, today I'm gonna talk to you about emotions. Yeah, that's like a, a really big one, you know, for a lot of people because so many people feel their emotions are out of control and, um, and they think they're bad. Some people don't want to have emotions. And so I'm here to say to you, emotions are not bad. But I'm also here to tell you that the reason that your emotions are so strong is because most likely there's an internal guide inside of yourself, sort of like your intuition or your spirit or that gut feeling that's really trying to push you into moving in a different direction. And maybe those emotions when they come out are being interpreted wrong. So one of the things that I'd like you to try would be to go ahead whenever you feel something I want you to feel it a hundred percent I mean I want you to just slam out that emotion so like if you get angry I want you to just go ahead and just really get angry okay if you're sad I want you to cry it out until your heart bleeds if you love I want you to all love so much until your heart explodes. If you're happy, I want you to laugh so hard that you're bent over with stomach pains. Now, after you've done that, I want you to reevaluate. So step aside and you say to yourself, okay, I just experienced anger to its full extent. And then you ask yourself, did that serve me? Now, when I say, did that serve you, really think about those words. Did it serve you? Did it serve you? Did your anger get what you wanted? Did it put you where you needed to be? Or did it destroy something you loved? Did it help you? Or did it make you lose your job? And once you determine that, you can really, like, when I say step aside, I want you to wait until you've, like, experienced it completely. Because a lot of times you can just let something burn out, okay? If you just go, instead of just letting it shrink out a little anger here, just go ahead and just, you know, let it out. That way it's all out, and then your vessel's empty, okay? When the vessel is empty, meaning all the emotion is out of you, then you're able to clearly think from a very clear perspective. And I want you to then at that point, when your mind is clear and you're calm, did it serve me? If the answer is yes, then keep on doing it. If the answer is no, then I want you to consciously make an effort to change your approach to something different. Remember, that the definition of insanity is doing something over and over again and expecting a change. So if your anger is not getting you the result that you want and it's not serving you, then figure something else out. I'm not saying that your emotions are bad because those that anger usually probably comes from a fear of something. And we'll talk about that in a different video. But if you really think about it, what are you afraid of? What are you really afraid of? Are you afraid of losing somebody? Are you afraid of getting hurt? Are you afraid of, you know, I mean, like, really, what are you afraid of? What's the worst thing that could happen? And did your anger make it worse or did it make it better? And in most cases, there's, uh, it usually makes it worse. But I have personally and don't tell anybody I told you this because it is a secret, okay? But I have personally actually chosen to get angry before. Actually, a few times. <laughs> and um, I don't know if it was like a real anger, like the kind of like, you know, where your blood pressure comes up, goes up. and But I, I chose that projection um, because I actually had gone through these exercises before and I knew what served me and what didn't serve me. And in this particular situation, I thought it was needed. I thought that I needed to stand up 
need to put my foot down and I need to put a little force out there and I need to say, this is what's going to happen. And if it doesn't, this is what's going to happen. Now, there's been times, you know, but I didn't like break anything <laughs> emotionally or spiritually or psychologically. Um, I found that when I allow my words to be sharp and hurtful, and I do that with anger, that those words can destroy something very precious to you permanently. And I learned that lesson a long time ago. So even when anger is projected at me, I literally have to bite my tongue on that one, you know? <laughs> it's like, I'm holding on, you know, like this. You're like, oh God, you know. Sometimes it's hard. Somebody just keeps on coming at you and keeps on coming at you. But, you know, I'm pretty good about letting their fire burn out. And I'll just sit there and watch the fire kind of let them just. And I'll wait for it to burn out. Give it a little bit of time. Sometimes 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Just try not to be reactive. Usually they'll come back calm. Sometimes apologizing. But in general, what I've found is that I choose the emotions that I want to experience based on the situation that I'm in. I've had so many people ask me, how do you do that? Well, I do that because I went through this process I just told you. When I would feel something like really hurt, I would cry and cry and cry. You know, just let those emotions out like, like I was a battered woman or something. You know, I mean, I just, whoo, you know, just cried those tears out. And, and, and then I would reflect on it and say, hey, did that serve me? A good portion of the time, the answer was no. If I was by myself and I needed to, um, and I didn't have an outlet to, you know, cry on, um, sometimes that answer was yes, it did serve me because uh, one of the things that I would do when I would feel like that is I just go ahead and just let it out and I need to have some kind of outlet so I'd start journaling and um or recording myself sometimes i would just get a recorder out and i would just sit there and and and, and you know and i just let it all out and then suddenly i felt better a large percentage of the time i felt better and so i would say yeah you know that did serve me that way and um but there's been times where i've years in the past i used to suffer from depression and so when I would cry, and I would cry and cry, and I would lean on other people, eventually that heaviness became too heavy for them. And so what it taught me was to start isolating and not to lean on people because they'll walk away after a certain period of time if taken enough. I can't take any more of that, Michelle, you know. That's just too much. And... Um, through the isolation, it caused me to get more depressed, and um, which is one of the videos that we talked about earlier. <laughs> and um, I had to figure out something else. You know, I had to go through a different process. And what I ended up doing was I ended up learning these techniques, and I was able to literally reprogram my brain and the way it functions, the way that the chemicals were released. And what I did was I started letting my actions control my emotions. And I started choosing the way I wanted to feel. And when I decided that I chose the way I wanted to feel, I would do the actions that brought me that feeling. And I started um, deciding what emotions were proper or um, relevant to the situation and sometimes crying was very relevant because I was experiencing compassion for somebody else and I would cry with them and 
and I would allow myself to feel their emotions and feel that heart-wrenching pain that they were feeling because I know what it feels like to not really feel like you have somebody to talk to, you know? And, and so through this whole process of deciding that I was in control of me and I was going to choose what emotions I was feeling um, and how I wanted to experience those emotions, I started to gain a sense of empowerment. And you too, you too can experience that. You can feel empowered. And empowered means that you feel power. Like, I'm in control. Yes, I'm in control. Yeah, I am in control. I'm in control, yeah. So, <laughs> I want you to try that little exercise, okay? I want you to just go ahead and rah, you know, just feel those emotions, okay? And don't be afraid to feel love. Feel it. Just go ahead. Because you know what? Who wants to reject love? Like, if somebody truly loves you, not just a fake love, because a lot of fake lovers, they're fake in love just to get something. But if you, somebody really truly acts like they love you, and they're not out to get something, you know, it's not for their own selfish benefits or something, they truly love you, who wants to reject that? And if you're really dishing out that love, like, and I mean dishing it out, like, really allowing that person to experience that love that you have, they're not going to reject that. They're going to embrace it. Because that kind of love is very rare. It's not very often that someone actually gets to come and step into the presence of somebody who can truly unconditionally say, no matter what you do, I love you. So this is Michelle Thompson, and I am signing out. Have a great day.